Hello, welcome to this video on organizing categorical data. If you're in Math OD2, this is section 5.2, and if you're in Statistics or Math 153, this is chapter 2. In this video, I will teach you how to create a frequency table, how to create a relative frequency table, how to create a bar graph, how to create a pie chart, and how to create, or sorry, how to analyze a pie chart. Also, if this video gets too long, I might break it up into two parts. So you might have to watch this video and a second one to get through all the topics. Let's get started. So here we have a collection of data. It looks like coffee, tea, espresso, and soda. So first of all, let's think about what we are working with. What kind of data do we have? Is it a count, a label, or a measure? Well, clearly the name of a drink is a label, and so we are working with categorical data. So the question throughout statistics is, how can I take a label and turn it into a number? Because you can't really perform a statistical analysis on words. So the simple thing that we do here is to go through and do a tally of each drink. So I'm gonna find coffee here, and I put a tally mark here. I have tea here, so I'll write tea there. I have espresso, so I'll put it here. I'm gonna continue this process. I'll pause the video and then I'll unpause it when I'm all done. Okay, as you can see, I use four different colors to mark the different beverages. Also, I wanted to apologize for the incorrect spelling. I stole it from the Math 82 book and that had the incorrect spelling. So as you can see, I have a bunch of tally marks down here. I'm gonna change them to numbers. So it looks like 16 people ordered coffee, it looks like 20 people ordered espresso, 4 people ordered soda, and 10 people ordered tea. Now, as you can imagine, doing these tallies, it's easy to make a mistake. In fact, the first time I did it, I only ended up with 58, so I needed to go back and fix it. So, a great fast way to check things is just to make sure that all of your numbers add up to the number of data points you started with. If you count, there were 10 beverages in this dimension, and there's five beverages in this dimension. 10 times five is 50, so these should all add up to 50, and in fact, they do. So that's a really wonderful way to sort of check yourself when you're doing something like counting. Now, of course, in the real world, we would always use a software program. If you're in my stats class, we use StatCrunch. So the sort of manual tallying isn't necessarily something you would see in real life in a job, but it's kind of a nice learning tool just so you can understand where the frequency table is coming from. So if I tell you, let's say, that 16 people ordered coffee, you might want to answer the question, well, is that a lot or a little? And you really can't answer that unless you know how many people total came into this shop. So for example, if I told you, oh, well, it's 16 out of 20 people, you could say, well, almost everyone ordered coffee. Whereas let's imagine that we had a thousand people coming in into our shop. So 16 out of a thousand is actually quite a small number. So I really can't answer the question as to whether 16 is a large or small number until I have something to compare it to. So that's why we often like to convert our answers to percents. And we do this by making a relative frequency table. So first, let's go ahead and copy our, let me make sure I'm getting this right. I don't think I am, 16. Okay, so we're gonna copy our frequency table right here, so it looked like 16, 20, 4, and 10, is that right? I think that's right, okay. So I'm just copying the numbers from the previous table. So you can express relative frequency as a fraction, a decimal, or a percent, and if you're weak in this area, you might wanna go back and sort of bone up on that and practice your fraction, decimal, and percent skills. So let's go through and do this. So remember, our total is 50. So if we express um, our number of coffee drinkers as a fraction, 
we would get 16 over 50. Now in statistics, unlike the rest of algebra, we don't always have to reduce our fractions. In fact, if you leave it this way, it's more informative because 16 people ordered coffee out of a total of 500. So that actually gives us a little bit more information. However, if we chose to, we could reduce it um, to eight over 25. So in statistics, I would accept both of those answers. Either one would be equally valid. Um, 20 over 50, again, that would reduce to two over five. Four over 50, that would reduce to two over 25. And 10 over 50, if you decided to reduce it, would reduce to one over five. Okay, how can I express these as a decimal? Well, <clears throat> if you don't remember how to do decimals, one way to do it is to literally put this into your calculator. And your calculator will do the math for you. So if you type in 16 divided by 50 into your calculator, your calculator should give you 0 0.32. And you can do that with the rest of these guys here. Um, and then this is 0.2 or 0.20. Well, how do we get from a decimal to a percent? Well, it's quite simple. We just multiply. I'll use a co different color here so you can keep track of it. We multiply by 100%. Another way to think about it is to move the decimal place over two times. So this becomes 32%. This becomes 40%. This becomes 8%. And this becomes 20%. So think about presenting this information at, I don't know, um, a conference or a meeting. If you told somebody that six, 16 people um, ordered coffee, again, your audience has no way of knowing whether that's a lot or a little. And let's just imagine that we're trying to make some decisions about, you know, how what beverages we should sell, what are the best sellers, what's selling the least, what should we order more of, what should we take off our menu. So again, just giving somebody the raw numbers may or may not be very helpful. Whereas, if in your meeting you said, hey, 32%, almost a third of our customers are drinking coffee, then you would definitely want to make sure that you leave it on your menu. Likewise, if 40% of your customers are ordering espresso, you would want to leave it on your menu. And then when you got to your soda, and let's say only 8% of your customers are drinking that, then, you know, you might want to make a different decision. Maybe consider taking it off your menu or buying a different soda, doing something to increase soda sales. Or, again, if it's just not something customers are interested in, taking it off the menu entirely. So hopefully this gives you some helpful understanding as to what a frequency table is and how to make one. And also how to calculate relative frequency as either a fraction, a decimal, or a percent. Stay tuned for my second video that finishes this lesson.